What's up guys, Llama Pen here. I'm gonna be talking about the new features coming up in NHL 24. There's a lot to cover. People who have played the game have already said it's gonna be a big adjustment for people. And from what I'm hearing, EA knows that they put out a real stinker with NHL 23. Do any of these changes look promising though? Or is it just another year of expectations and disappointment? Some of these things I will say I am looking forward to. Other things, not so much, but let's dive in. From non-stop pressure and physicality to dynamic new ways to attack, EA Sports NHL... First of all, are people liking this one-time slap pass right here from Panarin? It's been something that we haven't been able to really do in years past, and I've always wanted it, so I hope that's finally going to be in the game. 24 brings it, and so much more. We couldn't be more excited to show you what's new this year, including a suite of new gameplay features that up the intensity, authenticity, and connectivity of the game. Crossplay is here. Now, you can finally compete with or against your friends on same generation consoles. This vastly improves matchmaking quality and shortens wait times, so you and your crew can make the most of your time on the ice. So first of all, this one's a no-brainer. I think this is obviously good for growing the game. It's going to, like he said, make games easier to find. And also, what's kind of implicit is this is going to completely change the competitive scene. So online leagues are going to be totally different now. I, I haven't even really followed along, but I wonder if LG is going to be just all combined into one now, or if they're going to keep Xbox and PlayStation split up. I'm not sure, but... Do keep in mind also, though, that he did say it's not cross-gen, so you've got to be on the same generation, but Xbox and PlayStation can now play together, um, which is awesome. Like I said, this is a win on all fronts. This is a literal game changer. The exhaust engine lets you feel the intensity of hemming an opponent in the zone, forcing you to make strategic decisions like choosing to establish puck possession or attack on the rush. Exhaust engine is made up of the sustained pressure system and the goalie fatigue system. So, first of all, this one, I don't know how to feel about. It seems unnecessary. Like, I was talking to my friend about this, and there already is a natural built-in advantage when you're possessing the puck in the zone for long periods of time. Your opponent is naturally going to get more desperate and is more likely to make a bad play. Because you're in the offensive zone, possessing the puck well, mistakes are more likely to lead to goals. I don't think you need to add in like a physical, like uh, another guy I talked to said, it basically felt like they were just like, this year, ice tilt has been <laughs> like officially added to the game. That's kind of what it feels like. I also worry that this is going to encourage really lame gameplay. Are guys just going to be holding onto the puck, like ragging in the offensive zone and taking low percentage perimeter shots like to get greasy goals? Is it just going to be squeaky goal year? It seems like the goalies are flopping around a lot, at least in the trailer, um, because of the, the goalie fatigue system, which is fine if they're able to make saves consistently, but are, are rolling pucks going to be a problem for goalies this year? Because if it still is a problem for goalies and they're flopping all over the place, it's going to be a disaster. I worry about that. On the flip side, this could discourage skill zone defense where the guy just stands in front of his net and doesn't chase because there's now more of a penalty for having your opponent in your zone for a long period of time. So that's a potential good thing. I think that's why they implemented this to begin with. On the defensive side, you now have to choose between making the safe boards and outplay or risk turning the puck over in the slot. Now hold on, did you guys see that? So is this just a guy flipping it off the glass with the on-ice trainer on, or is there going to be an actual like control function for the glass pass? Is that going to be a thing now? Kind of like the board flip, where you just like tap a button and you get a glass flip? On the defensive side, I don't know. You now have to choose out. between making this. the safe boards and outplay. Or I don't know. What are, are glass passes going to be different next year? I'm, I'm interested. Risk turning the puck over in the slot. 
We've also added the goalie fatigue feature, adding over 50 new goalie animations, including a brand new desperation save package. Goalies will now tire as you increase attack zone time, move the puck around, and most importantly, get shots on net. As a goalie tires, they'll make more errors, causing rebounds and absolute chaos in the crease. Another thing I worry about with the goalie fatigue thing is, is it going to make goalie harder this year? Goalie's already a really hard position to play in EASHL if you're a manual goalie. And I'm not sure this is going to make it any easier, but we'll see. Take the body, take the game. The physics-based contact feature revolutionizes checking in NHL 24. Bringing... This is the thing I'm the most excited about, the physics-based contact. So they're going to get into it in a minute, but it looks like hip checks are back, which were basically all but gone last year. Uh, not to mention hitting just did not make sense last year. It was terrible. You could either light guys up usually if you had truculence, but other times there'd be no result from clear, significant contact. And it's little things like that that ruin the game for me. More physicality to the game and ramping up the fun and authenticity of defensive plays. This now, looks awesome. if you awesome. land a big check, your opponent will re-enter the play slower, creating more turnovers and counterattack opportunities. But if you don't connect, you'll be left out of position this really increases the risk-reward factor and makes gameplay incredibly exciting. Landing a clean, solid check on the opponent will result in new physics-based oh. and animation-based reactions, creating tons of new wow moments in every game. A quick push on the right stick will allow you to shove the opponent, creating quick puck separation with lower penalty risk. Plus, we've also introduced a new gameplay meta that adds a dedicated reverse body check control. This allows the puck carrier to protect the puck with their body to impactful effect. And to make all of that even sweeter, you can now send players into the bench and break the glass. So there's a lot to unpack there, but first of all, love the being able to hit into the bench and break the glass. These are old features that were in the game. I'm not going to complain that they're treating it like a new feature because at the end of the day, it's a, it's a nice feature. I like it in the game. It makes it a little more fun. So good on EA. But yeah, the hitting system looks totally different now. So you can now charge up for a shoulder check, which I believe is a button press. Um, and it looks like it's now more of a commitment. The hit stick is now going to be used to shove. And it looks like hip checking is now a button press, I believe, square, which uh, I like. I think that's better. Um, it also looks like they're reworking the reverse hitting, which, once again, dependent on the physics, could be really good. I believe that's now going to be a right stick click, which I don't necessarily love. But I just generally hope reverse hits are better this year, and you don't need a trade to do it. I also hope it doesn't result in a bunch of penalties like <laughs> last year. The thing I like about the hitting, too, is it looks like this has added more of a skill gap to hitting. So there's always been a skill gap for hitting, but now are you going to charge up for that shoulder check? Are you going to go for the shove, the safe shove? Are you going to go for that blow up hip check? Hitting is going to be more of a skill this year, it looks like, than in years prior, and I'm all for that. Now on to some stuff that may lower the skill gap in other areas. Skill has never been this fun. Total Control Skill Moves introduces a whole new control setup that makes highlight reel moves more intuitive and accessible. Button back moves give you more options, but timing to play right and reading the ice will be the difference between success and failure. However, if you prefer legacy controls, you'll still have that option. Plus, a new ability to fake, pass, or deek out of every move also adds a dynamic new offensive layer to the game. So, yeah, there's a lot to unpack there as well. So, but basically, there's a new control scheme where complicated deeks like the between the legs deke, the Michigan, the one-handed finish, these are all mapped onto just a button now. So they've basically, they call it more accessible, but what they're saying is they want scrubs to be able to do the hard deeks. So like, I don't know what other way to put it. I don't like this. So this isn't just like a different control scheme. It's an easier control scheme. That's why I don't like it. It reminds me of the game PGA 
2K23. They introduced a different control scheme this year where you can press three buttons to swing as opposed to using the stick to swing. And those are both allowed in competitive game modes. One of them is way easier than the other, so it kind of ruins the competitive nature of the game. Now in 24, if someone scores a Michigan on me or between the legs, I'm going to be wondering, were they using scrub controls? <laughs> you know what I mean? So I don't like this. Um, but he did say something interesting at the end here, which I'll replay. That option. Plus, a new ability to fake, pass, or deke out of every move also adds a dynamic new offensive layer to the game. I'm not totally sure what he means by this, but my first thought was, can you pass out of the normal basic toe drag now? Because you've never been able to do that in NHL games. You've been able to pass out of the Datsuk toe drag, but... I'm wondering if that's what he's talking about, um, just being able to pass out of every deke and fake out of every deke. Is the fake toe drag back? That that They slipped that in at the end, but that really perked my interest. Vision passing puts tape-to-tape -tape play with your teammates at your fingertips, offering quicker direct passes to keep puck possession and mount that all-important pressure. By mapping the controller's face buttons to your teammates, vision passing doesn't just allow more efficient passing, but opens up different opportunities like disguising a pass on a PP to set up the perfect play. This also unlocks stretch and breakaway passes, giving you new ways to attack the net. But hitting the correct button alone won't guarantee a perfect pass. Gameplay components and player attributes all factor into a successful play. Plus, We've added one touch passing, which lets you okay. quickly move um, the puck around the ice by tapping yeah. the pass button as the puck is in transit. Altogether, this creates so many more exciting passing opportunities and ways for players to get creative on the ice. Okay, so this is something I've seen other people get pretty excited about. Frankly, I'm, I'm kind of lukewarm on it. This feels like a thing that may lower the skill gap that it takes to actually aim the pass. Um, how much will your actual aim matter with this system? I'm still not really sure. Is it basically just only timing and attributes? I hope we'll at least be able to pass to the far man uh, when one of our teammates is in the passing lane. That's one thing um, that I could definitely see being an improvement. As I've said before, it does look like there'll, there's going to be some kind of mechanic for one-timing slap passes. That looks like that's built into this. Other than that, I, I, I don't really get it. A lot of this stuff they talk about doesn't seem new to me. We've always been able to make one-touch passes. Um, we've been able to make stretch and breakaway passes. It, it looks like the one-touch passes are just like they're slicker animations for it now. I don't know. I hope I'm wrong and this just becomes a situational thing that you use in addition um, to the normal old passing style. Uh, in certain situations, like with that that cool looking Euro pass behind the net, and and like I said earlier, when trying to make that stretch pass where your teammates obstructing the lane, but I don't know. You could still make that pass uh, in the past with a good sauce, and and you could do the behind the back behind the net pass before. It just seems different now. If this ends up looking like you need to be able to be good at manual passing and use the icon passing situationally. It could actually increase the skill gap, so I'm not totally out on this. I will say the thing that I've always really wanted was icon-based player switching for 1v1 modes. Um, I just feel like a lot of times I don't switch to the player that I'm trying to switch to, and icon player switching would, would fix that. But I've never really had an issue with the way passing worked before. For our brick walls out there, an update to our human goalie controls makes playing goal more accessible and intuitive. Historically, the game's controls made it easy to lose the net, creating frustrating empty net goals and a steep learning curve. So in NHL 24, we have added a new tethered control system. As you slide back and forth to make saves, you simply release the left analog stick and your goalie will auto-return back to a centered position. We have also added a new instinct system. This allows you to guess the location of the shot for a bonus on your save attempt. Guessing wrong increases the chance of a goal. It's a nice addition for our veteran goalies and really breathes new life into the position. From high pressure plays that'll leave you sweating to sending your friends into the bench, 
NHL 24 steps the game up to give you those authentic hockey feelings. Yeah, so there, real quick, they added some new stuff for human goalies. This new tether system looks like it could change the way you play net. Um, it looks like they're going to reward you more for your positioning and guessing right uh, when you sell out. So last year especially seems so brutal to anyone who played goalie. It felt like goalies who made good reads would still just get beat because of close quarters or just EA nonsense. So I think making goalie not only easier to play but more fun to play seems like the direction they're going. So it, it looks like goalie could be really fun next year. I just hope the goalie fatigue system doesn't drag guys down and isn't just forcing goaltenders to the ice constantly. So that's pretty much it. I did want to cover a few other quick things. Um, so this is from Eki. He's one of the best 1v1 players in the world and he got to play the game early. He said L2 or backskating is quote dead on offense. So this is frankly something that's been needed probably for a long time. It's not really even close to looking like real hockey. Um, but if you're going to play at a certain level in NHL, in past years, you've basically had to, had to get good at it. Um, so this could potentially be one of the best overall additions to the game, even if it's something I used plenty in the past. He also says the dunk when coming around the net has been fixed a little bit, which is good. I don't mind it to some degree, like if you're able to come around right in front of the net, that should be a quality scoring chance, but some of these wraparound goals last year just felt really cheap and unearned. So these are not really small changes, but um, they weren't mentioned in this video, and I really thought they were worth mentioning. Uh, the backskating thing is especially could be the biggest change in the game next year. So overall, I just think it's going to be different next year. Will it be better? I'm not really sure, but it seems like they're at least trying some new ideas I'm just not sure how it's going to translate into the meta and in terms of fun gameplay. So, in my opinion, none of this stuff is going to matter if the basic physics of the game don't work properly. So how players interact with the puck and how they interact with each other is the single most important fundamental thing that is going to determine if this game's good. The reason the NHL 23 was bad was because these very basic mechanics and physics didn't work well. It felt like too many times in 23, players were rewarded for making bad plays and punished for making good ones. And that was the single biggest problem. When the physics don't match the expectations of the players, the players are not gonna have fun. So stay tuned for the end of the year uh, NHL 23 videos from me. It wasn't my favorite year, but it still had some great moments. So as usual, look out for my best of EASHL video and best of online versus play um, as NHL 23 starts to wind down. So hope you guys like this video and I'll see you in the next one.